Today's topic is the Cold War, with a specific focus on Europe. Historians disagree on its beginning and ending dates, but typically you will see 1945, 46, or 47 as the beginning, uh, to 1989, 90, or 91 as the ending, depending on the source. For our purposes, we will use 1945 to 1990. Our overall goals for this topic will be the division of Europe, the Truman Doctrine, some key events of the Cold War, and the collapse of the Soviet Union. Today's focus will be the first two. First, we will discuss some underlying international themes that emerged after the Second World War. The U.S. became a dominant economic superpower, with many countries being dependent on it for aid. Many international organizations were developed to attempt to deal with the widening gap between the rich and the poor. Groups like the IMF and World Bank gave countries a place to secure loans during hard times. A true global economy emerged with all countries being interdependent on one another. Unfortunately, despite some honest efforts, many places in the world still suffer from food shortages and even famine. It is against this backdrop and the ruins of World War II that the Cold War began. This is a map of Europe from the 1950s. It shows us the division of Europe into the Communist East versus the Capitalist West. Looking at the map, we can define some Cold War terms. The orange countries were sovereign nations that were collectively known as the Communist Bloc or Eastern Bloc nations. Like the Soviet Union, they were a single party state, the Communist Party, but they, quote, elected their own leaders and had a voting rights in the UN. This differs from places like Ukraine, Latvia, Lithuania, Georgia, etc., who are independent nations today, but were part of the Soviet Union then. The blue countries are NATO countries, or the Western democracies. NATO is a military alliance in which each country contributes money and troops to a separate military known as NATO troops. The orange countries represent its counterpart, Warsaw Pact. Likewise, they're also members of the Comicon, short for Communist Economy, which was an integration of the country's economies. The blue countries with stars on them represent the EEC, or the European Economic Community. This is an integration of the capitalist economies of Europe. Later in the 1980s, they became the EU and have expanded their membership. These regional organizations were common in the years following World War II. Others include the OAS, or the Organization of American States, which is a Western Hemisphere group made up of all countries of North, Central, and South America. It still exists, and it is a forum where we can solve our problems diplomatically. Of course, there's also the UN, which was created in 1945 as well. They took the defunct League of Nations and kept what worked and fixed what didn't. The structure, they structured it with a security council that is made up of five permanent members and 10 rotating members. All nations make up the General Assembly, currently 153, and each country gets one vote. They also have a military branch of, quote, peacekeeping troops to enforce their decisions if necessary. Trivia time. Which first lady wrote the Universal Declaration of Human Rights? Five, four, three, two, one. If you chose Eleanor Roosevelt, you're right. President Truman appointed her to the U.S. delegation and she served for many years. Fun fact. This is part of why she is known as First Lady of the World. Now back to our story. This map of Europe is similar to the first, but shows us the part of the Cold War that takes place immediately following World War II. If you remember, the USSR pushed the Germans westward and the US and Great Britain pushed them eastward back to their own boundaries and they raced to Berlin, each wanting to be the country to liberate Germany from the Nazis. Stalin created his buffer zone, claiming he wanted to ensure that the Soviet Union would not invade again. Here's his buffer zone. Thus, he influenced those places he liberated, and that is how they became communist countries. The red line is what Winston Churchill referred to as the Iron Curtain in his Sinews of Peace speech, referring to the division of Europe into the Communist East versus the Capitalist West. Then there is the division of Germany into two countries, East Germany and West Germany. East Germany is communist and West Germany is capitalist and democratic. 
The inset map shows the division of the city of Berlin itself, first into zones of occupation, then in 1946, Britain, France, and the United States combined to form West Berlin. This began negotiations between the former allies on how this would work. Logistically, this didn't make sense. West Berlin, half of the city, was a capitalist economy that was geographically located in the heart of a communist country. Do you see it? Ultimately, they built railroads, highways, and canals specifically for West Berlin to do business and travel to the West German border. Needless to say, Berlin wouldn't be a hotbed of Cold War tensions to come due to this setup. President Truman would set the foreign policy of the Cold War, which would be followed by all eight U.S. Cold War presidents, ending with Reagan. This was due to the advice of the diplomat George Kennan. Kennan, an expert on Russia, believed that communism was a good idea, but ultimately would fail because it went against human nature. He said that humans are greedy and selfish, and the system would therefore implode from within. He said that there was little that the U.S. or any other country could do but sit and wait for it to happen in those countries that were already communist. However, the U.S. and the West could try to stop it from spreading, contain it, to places it already existed. The Truman Doctrine found two ways to attempt this containment. One, military aid, give weapons supplies to countries uh, who were attempting to put down communist revolutions, um, as well as training their armies on how to do so. But more importantly, monetary aid, billions of dollars to rebuild Europe and strengthen their economies. Both Truman and Kennan understood the best way to thwart communism was to have a successful capitalist economy with a strong middle class. And it worked in places like France and Italy uh, and even in Japan. 